Must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You were content to let me shine At your way You always walked a step behind So I was the one with all the glory While you were the one with all the strength A beautiful face without a name A beautiful smile to hide the pain Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be. I could fly higher than any Cause you are the wind beneath my wings. have appeared to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth Of course I know it I would be nothing without you Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be. I can fly higher than any But you are the wind beneath my wings. Did I ever tell you, you're my hero? You're everything, everything I wish I could be. Oh, and I could fly higher than an eagle. But you are the wind beneath my wings. Cause you are the wind beneath my wind Good morning friends Thank you so much for being here As we come to remember Eddie To pay tribute to him And to worship God and give thanks for his life And to stand with his family in this time of their sadness um, tough way to start a service, having heard him sing for us, eh? Yeah. As I started playing the song in the back, I said to you, Lane, we're, gonna, we're all going to be in tears right at the beginning. But uh, wonderful to see those images, that big smile, and to, and to hear that voice um, as we celebrate a remarkable man today. So, um, we're going to begin with a prayer. No, before that, I want to read a couple of sentences of scripture and then we're going to pray. These are the words of, of Jesus that he speaks in the most surprising of places. He's standing outside the tomb of, of Lazarus in a place of death. This is what Jesus chooses to say. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes and trusts in him may not perish, but have eternal life. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help 
in time of trouble. Let's pray together. Lord God, we do want to thank you this morning that you are our refuge and our strength. That on this day, as we breathe, you hold us in your strong hands. Today, we want to celebrate Eddie's life, to give thanks for this amazing man. Thank you that we have shared life with him. Thank you that we've been touched by him in many ways. Thank you for the gift that he has been. And we pray that as we gather today to remember him, to honour him, to grieve with loved ones, we pray that we will sense your peace among us and we will know the strength of those strong hands and that we will know the hope that you give us in times like this. So we welcome you in our midst, Lord. We pray that you will help us today so that we may know your hope and even the joy that you promise your people in the midst of our sadness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to welcome all of you to this place as we gather to remember Eddie and to the many others who are with us online. I know around the country and around the world there will be others who are watching the service and hopefully uh, we're able to make all the technology work for us. And if we do, if there are transmission issues, we will have a recording that will be updated later. So if, if you're coming and going, but uh, there will be a chance to see the, the recorded version a little later in the day. Unfortunately, because of the, the, the times that we're living in, we're not going to have a chance to sing along to the organ, but we've got lots of music in the service, and that's exactly how Eddie would want it to be. We've already had him singing for us, and we've got uh, several several hymns of worship that we're going to have playing up on the screen um, as part of the service, and that we, we join in with um, um, and offer up as worship to God. And so our opening hymn this morning is How Great Thou Art. Be up on the screen and we'll see a congregation singing, and the words will be up there too.
We meet in this solemn moment to worship God, to give thanks for the life of our brother Eddie, to commend him to God's loving and faithful care, and to pray for all who mourn. In the presence of death, Christ offers us sure ground for hope and confidence, and even for joy, because he shared our human life and death, was raised again triumphant, and lives forevermore. In him, his people find eternal life. Let us then hear the words of Holy Scripture, that from them we may draw comfort and strength. I want to read um, from two passages this morning. The one is from Psalm 103. And this is God coming to us in our weakness, in our sadness. And the psalmist writes, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who honor him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, our days are like grass. We flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who are man, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments. And everlasting to everlasting is his love. And then some words from Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 8. Paul writes, If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We'll come back to those two passages in a little while. One of the, the things that we want to do today is to uh, remember Eddie well, to, to, to tell stories. I'm sure there are many. And I know that there are a number of people who are going to be paying tribute to him uh, today. I think we're going to start the, the two tributes that are coming uh, by video. Um, I think if we just follow those, the, the two that you have there today, and then after that, the, um, I'm not even sure who's speaking. I think there's the numbers of here, but you can count up when you're ready, and there's no particular order that's been arranged. Okay, so let's have the two, the two video tributes first. Grandpa, I have been trying and trying and trying to find the right words to say, but nothing I write down, nothing I say aloud has come close to what I want to say and then I hear a little voice in the back of my head saying Desmond I'm proud of you my boy and when I hear those words which you have said to me on countless occasions I can only but thank you thank you for the time that you've spent with me 
and making it as special as you did. Our golfing trips, fishing, even when I was smaller and driving my little cars on your back, I know that that was just to tickle your back, but you know, to me that was time with you and it was precious. I am not going to live my life with regrets as much as I wanted to spend more time with you. However, I will promise you this, is that I will aspire to try and at least be half the man that you were to me and you were to the family. The love that you showed for every single one of us was absolutely immense. The last speech I ever heard you say, you mentioned the fact that having the family around you was absolutely priceless. And I couldn't agree more with that. I can only hope and pray that I can, like I said, be half the man that you were to my family and their family after. My children are going to be all the better for meeting you, for having the time spent with you, and just for knowing you. They will constantly be reminded of how much you did for our family and how much you meant to every single one of us. Your name will live on. We will do our best to make you proud. I know you were proud. You told me so many times but I'm going to do my best so that when I see you next and get that almighty big hug, you'll repeat those words. I just want to say that I love you with all my heart. I'll never stop. But I appreciate everything you've done for us. So I'll raise a glass every single year to thank you. I love you lots. Be safe up there. Keep looking after us as I know you will be doing in between your naps. But we don't mind that. Love you, Gramps. Hi, Dad. I want to thank you for the love that you have for us, for your support in all we did. You always encouraged us, and you were our biggest fan. You were with us in all our successes and all our failures. Your love for us never failed. Dad, I remember the one year that you had bought me this beautiful floral dress, all pastel colours, and I had to take it back and change it for, for some reason or other. And when I came back, and showed you what I exchanged it for, which was a pair of dungaree shorts and a bright shirt. You just looked at me, shook your head, and walked out the room. But Dad, even in that, I knew that you loved me, and I knew that you always would. It's this, help, this love that helped me to know and accept as much as humanly possible the awesome, unfailing, faithful love our Heavenly Father has for each one of us. I will forever be grateful for this. Angie's often said that you were more of a father to him than his father was. And you taught him how to be part of a family, even a large one like ours. And your grandchildren, Dad, Bronwyn, Desmond and Susie, Barbara and Dave, Calvin, and your, all your great-grandchildren. Their lives are all enriched because you are part of it. 
and you will always be an example to them. I remember the time that we recorded the songs for Mum. And it's such a special memory for me, Dad. The memory of a shared passion that you and I had. And you so enjoyed it. Because, firstly, you were doing it for Mum. Who you absolutely loved all the way to the last. And secondly, because you just loved singing. But Dad, one day we will be together in heaven and we will be able to sing praises to God our Father all day long, every day, for the rest of our lives, for eternity. And how awesome is that going to be? I love you so much, Dad. And this is not a goodbye. This isn't until we meet again. That's great, thank you. I, I don't know who would like to come first. Um, we have a, a sister, Rosemary, who's a, a preacher, so I settle back. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Thank you, Mr. Archbishop. Wonderful to have you back in this calling that you know so well. Do you want to use this or you? Good morning everybody, this used to be my spiritual home some years ago, so it's like coming home again, but it's completely different now. Is this on? Yeah. Let me just start by saying that growing up, my brother was my friend, my protector, and my helper. If I was to get a spanking, and there was every possibility that he would get it as well, because he would interfere and try and stop it. We both used to go to piano lessons, and because I couldn't ride a bike, he had to walk, I had to walk, and he went on his bicycle, so he would lift me half the way, because it was against the law, in any case, to lift anybody on the bike, but that didn't see him to deter it. He was always my big brother, and I was always his little sister. No matter what our age, no matter what our size, they had nothing to do with it. Eddie was a man of many talents and interests, but his main interest in love was his wife and family. He supported them in whatever interest they had at that moment. And when the boys were into running, he was there at the track, encouraging them, timing them, encouraging them on. When Denise was into knitting and sewing, he would look after the children, feed them and bath them, so that Denise could finish an article for a special occasion. I can remember that green dress that she was knitting in this machine. When Denise was president of the WA, he was there to fetch and carry, even to transporting ladies to a district meeting in Uganda. One of the best decisions he ever made in his life was to marry my friend. <laughs> and I married his friend, and thus we spent many hours, days, and holidays together, and so our families grew even closer. After their marriage, nearly 63 years ago, Eddie and Denise moved to Johannesburg so that he could further his career in the printing industry. Color printing was just coming out, and we had to know all about it. And that is where the children were born. But it wasn't long before they moved back to Peter Marisburg, and our families again spent many happy hours together. When their career changed sent them to the Pine Town, my husband and I would pack our children into our car and drive to Pine Town for an evening of playing canasta, while the children wrecked the house. Eddie was a mean canasta player. Once the children were educated, Eddie's employer relocated to Peter Marisburg, and thus he and Denise moved back once again. Eddie took up bowls and while there made friends with Keith Thompson. And what a friendship that was. And there began a great friendship which eventually worked its way to become a cooking competition to see who could make the most difficult recipe. Sadly, Keith passed away a few years ago and Eddie gave up bowls when Denise wasn't well, so as he felt he needed to be with her at home. 
He became active in the church choir and found that surprisingly he had a very good voice and loved to sing. I know Jenny has a video on her phone of him singing in the workshop when he thought no one was listening. He really enjoyed singing God's praises no matter where he was. He also loved thank you and thank you Mark and Jenny for taking him as often as she could. When they moved to Britain, when Eddie and Denise joined the Bible study, and I believe he was the only man in that group. <laughs> but that never faced him. It didn't worry him at all. Health-wise, he had a continuing skin condition, which caused him and the family to be concerned. But lately, he seemed to have this under control. When he had his first stroke, he was determined to get over it. He did his exercises diligently every day, up and down the steps, and all sorts of things. But the second stroke was another story, and he had to control it, no control over that. But God saw his distress and decided that his mental impairment was ready, and so took her home. Billy Graham once said, if you hear that I have died, don't believe it, I have only changed my address. Rest in peace, my darling brother. We will meet again when my room is ready. But I am actually very in as if you are meeting Jesus first. Japanese, yeah. Barry and Pam, Mark and Jenny, Linda and Andy, grandchildren and great grandchildren. My heart goes out to all of you at this time. May you draw strength and comfort from the Lord that we have to give you not to God. And God is looking after him. Amen. Eddie and Denise's total devotion to one another and their love and support were such a beautiful witness to everybody around them. They truly epitomized what marriage is all about. During Eddie's illness, Denise's love and care was one of the things that kept him going, and the other was his unshakable faith. He was always so grateful to God for his many blessings. Even when he was ill, I never once heard him complain. And his main concern was not his own discomfort, but Denise and the fact that he couldn't help her enough. He loved to cook, and I was privileged to receive his delicious beef dish. I don't know quite what it's called, but it was absolutely delicious. Best than I've ever tasted in any restaurant. In our group, Eddie's contributions were always carefully considered and truly insightful. The relation, his relationship with Jesus was so close and deep, and a real witness and inspiration to us all. We will miss him so much, but I speak for the whole group when I say that. To Denise and your family, we love you and we are there for you at any time. You 
this land. I've got several tributes to read. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Uh, uh, don't need anybody else. Who's, who's okay. If we read through, um, some of these are from from people sitting in the front row there. Um, and uh, they're hoping I will, I will cry the tears. <laughs> From you. My precious props, Dad, how I miss you every day. With you and Mom living with us in the last three years, it's been an absolute blessing. I thank you for the precious time you gave us. Thank you for all that I have learned from you and about you. Such a gentle and strong man. You would, all, you would always sit and think out a problem and how to solve it. And it could always be solved with your theory, and you did it. You had the deepest, dearest, precious, devoted love of mom, the love of your life. How you waited for her time and time again so patiently at the WA meetings. They can go on a little, can you? <laughs> <laughs> While she met her way to the WA ladies, I recall you saying, WA for you means waiting again. <laughs> I remember your precious words of mum. I am in awe of her love. Pops, we're going to miss your beauty. I told mum she's got to step up now, but there's no one who can take that place. Our Babuti King. Your recipe book with pages of all your sticky fingerprints will be treasured forever. We will take mum now under our wings for you from here. She will be beneath your wings up there with you with your angels. For your kind, soft, gentle way of who you were. A kind, gentle man who never said an unkind word of anyone, no matter what. Who sang so beautifully into our life. Who did so with his daughter Linda, for his beloved Denise. And how you raised us up, this is a song that occurs even today, to where we all are now, because of who you are. You are my angel. My pops. To Gary, Mark, and Linda, you were a most beautiful, kind, caring, devoted, loving, blessed father to them. Grandfather and great grandfather, and for me, the most precious, beloved, adored, loving father in law to me in the whole world, the person to be a wish for. I hope I can pronounce this right. Ka Kafupe. <laughs> Kafupi. Okay, Kafupi, Tinky, and Bessie were not just our dogs. But we know you love them just as much as your other grandchildren competition them. <laughs> they loved you too as their gramps. Thank you. You are the best, my pops. I love you forever, my precious. Thank you. Thank you. This is from Gary. Dear Dad, what can I say to express how I feel? There are so many thoughts, and none makes a whole lot of sense at the moment. What do I remember about our times together? Well, you taught me to ride a bicycle, to fish, to drive a car, and so much more. It doesn't mean I was uh, good at fishing, but it does mean you helped me to grow up, and you were there for all the important times in my childhood. You took me to music lessons, roamed the sideline during rugby matches, cheered and encouraged from the stands at the athletic meetings. You encouraged all your kids in their choices and supported us wholeheartedly. You even learned to coach athletics to be part of our activities. When we were kids, you and Mum welcomed our friends and your home was always open, gathering many dear friends. Lifelong friends have all known your wonderful warmth and hospitality. Through your and Mum's welcome, quite a bit of help from Linda, I met my wonderful wife who brings me so much happiness. Your love for Mum over more than 60 years of marriage leaves me in awe and has always been an inspiration to me. I hope to have the same measure of love and happiness in my own marriage. You showed us by example how to be hard working and look after our families. I remember you worked two jobs at one time to give our family the best chances could wish for us. 
Through every challenge, you aspire to become better and seize opportunities. I am immensely proud of how hard you worked to achieve success. You gave us all the gift of education and a chance to achieve our dreams. That gift has helped all your kids, grandkids and great grandkids. Your passion for your vocation, you were fortunate enough to share with your dear friend Terry. Your passion for wildlife and nature, you've been lucky to share with your dear friend Tom, your son and friend Mark, his wife Jenny and brother-in-law Carl. Your passion for gardening was enjoyed with all who shared plates of food prepared by you, including a mystery beef dish. If you're very <laughs> we still have the many spice and sauce stains on our recipe books where we thumb through the pages preparing feasts to share noisy meals. You touched so many lives all over the world. I thank you and Mom for my amazing life and I know that you've shaped me to be who I am. You will be missed by your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and all of you knew and loved you. I love you and miss you, your son, Gary. This is for Mark. George Edward Telford. My dad was the strongest man I know. He was big in both size and stature, but he had such a gentle heart. I have learned so many character traits from him. Responsibility, morality, optimism, can-do attitude, respect and passion. He was passionate about his family, his gardening, his sport, and so passionate about cooking. I didn't know this about him, but <laughs> clearly, clearly also another recurring theme. We have several favourite cookbooks of his that are stained with his food stains and messy fingerprints. And as for sport, he would never fail to, to have a long post-mortem with me after a Sharks or Springback rugby game, or subject us to five days of a cricket test. Ever ready, Eddie also always found a solution to anything put in front of him. He would think it through and then come up with a solution, then execute on it. I'm sure he applied this methodical process throughout his working life, as well as to the many DIY projects he completed or assisted me with. He adored my mother, doting on her, and was the perfect gentleman, always making sure her needs were met and making sure she was comfortable and happy. Their love for each other shone through. They are a shining example of how a couple should be, and he played his part in making that so. Dad was more to us than a father. He was a friend, a supporter, a guiding light with an offbeat sense of humour, often getting himself into trouble with us and hanging his head when admonished. He never said a bad word about anyone, even one-sided refs or ill-mannered drivers. He was the eternal optimist, and that reflected in his positive look out of my life. Dad, we miss you beyond words, but we know you are at peace. And rest assured, we will look after your darling wife for you. This is how it is. The niece and the family have asked me to convey the, the deep gratitude and appreciation to everyone for their loving care and concern, for all the praying. All the well wishes received during and after Eddie's illness. Eddie was so touched to discover the outreach from everyone, to know how many people cared so much. Um, one place I've noticed this is on the, there's a WhatsApp group, at the men's group at church, and so many people writing to say I'm not so disturbed. I love your group. He was a special man. He was a dear friend, a loving brother, a cherished husband, a doting father beloved grandfather and great-grandfather, and held in high esteem by us all. We have been amazed at how many lives he has touched and left his mark on through business, sport, family and friends. Thank you everyone for being a part of the celebration of Eddie's life today. And Denise writes, my darling Eddie, I have been so richly blessed to have had the privilege of you being such a fulfilling part of my life for 65 years. Rest in peace, my dears, for we need to be. 
That's a wonderful thank you. And I know that there will be more stories. And one of our jobs as people who love and miss this man is to tell them. Tell them often, tell them so warmly that people who never knew him will feel like they did. We're going to um, allow you to choose another song for us now. And it's uh, another worship song that he was very fond of, uh, based on Psalm 42, as the dear and the Lord. Him. That's the only time I've seen him 
not uh, cheerful and happy, but he really is such an optimistic, hopeful person. Devoted to his family, and such a gift to us all, and we will miss it dearly. And so today we grieve. Uh, we grieve that we don't see Eddie sitting among us, um, leaving dirty fingerprints on the inbox or something. <laughs> That our grief today is not despair. We grieve with hope. Real, solid, biblical hope. Paul reminds us in Romans 8, and he uses, he runs out of words almost. He says, There is nothing, nothing, can I say it one more time, nothing in all of creation that could ever separate us from the love of God expressed in Christ Jesus. He, he takes far too long to make that point, but he keeps on repeating it and repeating it. Nothing, he says, and just in case we don't get the point, he goes on and makes it clear. He says, not even death can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Not even this thing that seems to separate us so completely can separate us from the love of God in Christ. The reason that we grieve with hope is because we are held secure in this love that we cannot be separated from, even in the presence of death. And so in his letter to the Corinthians, um, it's as if Paul is mocking death, the old enemy. He says, where, O death, is your victory? Where is your sting? Show me. He says, it's gone. Death is destroyed. Death has been defeated. And so we grieve with hope. There's that line often quoted from the charming movie, The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Um, it's often quoted because it's such good theology. The hotel manager says, we have a saying here in India that everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. And that's where we find ourselves today. It's truth here. The truth is that Eddie's story has not ended. It's just beginning in many ways. in the presence of God. And so there's the reason for our hope. This, this hope that we have in the midst of our grief. But wonderful though that hope may be, and uh, as much as it may encourage us, we still have to navigate this time, this in-between time. Our sadness and our grief um, that we experience now, that God would not have us pretend doesn't exist because of God. And in the psalm, we read, we reminded that God has compassion on us as a father has compassion on, on their child. And that word compassion literally means to suffer with. He enters into our sadness with us. Knowing the hope, but suffering with us. We serve the Lord who wept with his friends. When, when Lazarus died, Jesus wept outside the tomb. Somebody who faced death himself, who's been down that road who understands better than anyone possibly could. And his love remains steadfast. The psalm says to us, it is from everlasting to everlasting. And so on the one hand we grieve with hope, on the other we are comforted in our grief by the one who, from whose love we can never be separated. And that strength carries us until that glorious day when we are reunited. I know you have spoken about the moment when we will be together again. And I don't know whether there will be cookbooks in heaven. I'm sure there will be singing. <laughs> At um, the funeral of Nelson Mandela, the preacher on that day, Ezekiel Siwa, used this picture that I think is so helpful for us to remember at a time like this. This is what he said. What is dying? A ship sails, and I stand watching until she fades on the horizon. And someone standing next to me says, she's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is still as large as when I saw her last. The diminished size and total loss of sight is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone at my side says she is gone, there are others who are watching her coming. And their voices take up a glad shout. Here she comes. And that is I. And Eddie has been 
welcomed in ways that our imaginations can't begin to grasp into the presence of God, surrounded by the throng of faithful witnesses. And he is as alive as we are known him. Just gone from our side. So, until that moment, we'll be together. We remember him, we tell stories, we continue to let him inspire us and lead us and influence us. And he remains a presence in our life. Until that glorious banquet, it is fitting that uh, <laughs> the final scene is described as a, as a heavenly feast. I'm sure he would have a role to play in both the feast and the choir um, that, that is there with us in the, in the home. Amen. Let's pray together. Glory and thanks be given to you, Almighty God, our Father. Because in your great love for the world, you gave your Son to be our Saviour. He lived our life, bore our griefs, and died our death on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought him back from death with power and with great glory. And that he has conquered sin and death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We praise you for the great company of the faithful whom Christ has brought through death and among whom Eddie now stands. This crowd who join with us in worship, prayer and service even now. Eternal God, in your wisdom and grace, you have given us joy through the lives of your departed servants. And today we thank you for Eddie and for our memories of him. We praise you for your goodness and mercy that followed him all the days of his life, and for his faithfulness in the tasks to which you called him. We thank you that for Eddie, the tribulations of this world are over, and death is behind him. And we pray that you will bring us with him to the joy of your perfect kingdom. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, Deal graciously with we who mourn, that we may cast every care on you and know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have a closing hymn now um, before we entrust any to the God in whom he trusted. So maybe we can stand as this uh, uh, in a place to God be the glory.
want to entrust Eddie now to the God in whom he trusted. Let us commend Eddie to God. Into your keeping, O merciful God, we commend your son Eddie. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the joy of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And to end the service with the, the blessing, um, and then as we as we going out, the family and lead us out. Um, maybe we have had the very last of those videos, it's the Josh Groban one that we've been hearing about all through the service. Um, I think this is it. He was some help from uh, Josh Groban. <laughs> <laughs> the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us always. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as a family in this
眷我。